shout every day. Every day. It's, you it's you I live for. One more time. Every day. Every day. It's, you it's you I live for. What to say, but it's you gave me life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now. But you've saved me, Lord. I give all that I am to you. Every day I will Sing 
Isang mapagpalang umaga sa ating pong lahat na taga GCF Northeast at muli sa araw nito ay sama-sama tayong uh, sasamba sa ating Diyos na buhay. Kaya hinihiling ko po na samahan niyo ko sa isang pambungad ng panalangin. Tayo po ay manalangin. Aming Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Ikaw na may lalang ng langit at lupa, kami po ay sama-samang lumalapit sa iyo at sumasamba. Hinihiling po namin sa mga oras na ito na kami po ay iyong siya sa atin. Kung meron man po kaming nagawang hindi kaaya-aya sa iyong harapan, maging sa isip, mga ma sa aming puso, mga nasambit ng aming bibig, mga bagay na maaring nilihim namin. Panginoon, patawarin mo kami sa lahat ng mga bagay na ito. At tinihiling ko po, O Diyos, na hugasan mo kami ng banal na dugo ni Jesus. Salamat po, O Diyos, at Ikaw ang siyang nagpatawad sa lahat ng aming mga kasalanan. Sapagkat Ikaw ang Diyos ang nagsabi, Ikaw mismo, Panginoon, na mutawi sa iyong bibig, na kami ay patatawarin sa lahat ng aming mga kasalanan. Salamat o Diyos, salamat sa iyong pag-ibig sa amin na magpasawalang hanggan. Salamat o Diyos, at kami ay iyong binanal sa iyong harapan. Ginawa mo po kaming maputing niebe, at salamat Panginoon, at kami ay malayang makakatungo sa iyong trono ng biyaya. At sa umagang ito, sa aming panambahan sa iyo, Tinataas po namin ang aming pong tagapagsalita. Samahan mo po ang aming pastor. Ikaw o Diyos ang siyang humawak sa kanyang sasabihin. Ikaw o Diyos ang magbigay ng banal na espiritu. Guide him, protect him, use him as your mouthpiece, O Lord. And every word that will proceed out of his mouth, O Lord God, Let it be seasoned with salt. At ayaan mo, Panginoon, na ang bawat salita na siyang bibig kasi ng aming pastor, nawa ito ay may tanim sa aming mga puso. Ihanda mo po ang aming puso. Gawin mo pong uh, matabang lupa upang ito'y matamnan ng iyong salita. 
at kami ay mabuhay ayon sa iyong kalooban, ayon sa iyong naisin. At kami, O Diyos, ay mamunga ng tatlong po, anim na po at daraanin. At kami ay magpatuloy sa paglilingkod sa iyo. At ang dalangin po namin na ikaw ang sasama maging sa aming lak paglalakbay, O Lord, sa aming pananampalataya. Hinihiling po namin na kayo ang sumama sa amin at maging ang aming mga kapatiran na sa mga oras nito, maari po ang ilan sa amin ay nasa banig ng karandaman. Ikaw o Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat, buksan mo ang durungawan sa langit, idantay mo ang mapaghimalamong kamay at pagilingin mo sila sa lahat ng kanilang karandaman. Salamat po o Diyos. At ang lahat ng karandamang ito ay iyong pinagaling sapagkat ikaw ang Diyos na hindi nagbabago kahapon, ngayon at magpakailanman. Salamat o aming Ama at dinadalangin din po namin ang aming mga kapatid na maari sila po ay dumaranas ng kasalatan sa mga panahong ito. Hinihiling ko po o Diyos na ikaw ang magpala sa kanila katagpuin mo ang kanilang pangangailangan. Ipagkaloob mo ang mga bagay na kanilang hinihingi sa iyo. Mga bagay na iniiyak nila sa iyong trono, o Diyos. Salamat po, Panginoon, at ikaw ang dumirinig sa kanilang mga panalangin. Maging ang aming mga kapatid na maaring dumaranas ng hindi pagkakasundo-sundo sa kanilang pamilya. Kung meron man pong tanim ng galit, kung meron man di pagkakaunawan, ikaw o Diyos ang gumawa ng kaparaanan upang muli ibalik mo ang init ng kanilang pagsasama na sila ay magkasundo at sila inyong pagbuklurin ng iyong pag-ibig ang ama sa kanyang anak ang ina sa kanyang anak ang magkakapatid maging ang mag-asawa Lord pagbuklurin mo sila ng iyong pag-ibig at samahan mo sila sa kanilang lakbay pananampalataya Panginoon salamat Panginoon at ikaw ang sasama sa amin sa umagang ito at ganun din po ang amin panalangin sa amin po mga deacons and deaconesses Panginoon sila po na itinalaga mo bilang mga uh, leader ng, ng panambahang ito samahan niyo po sila bigyan niyo po sila ng talino yung mga bagay na inatang mo sa kanila, samahan mo sila. Gamitin mo ang kanilang mga kamay, gamitin mo ang kanilang pananampalataya, gamitin mo ang kanilang lakas, ang kanilang oras. Panginoon, samahan mo po sila sa kanilang plano at ikaw ang Diyos na siyang makapangyarihan sa lahat. Hindi mo sila iiwan o pababayaan man. At ang kanilang mga bagay na ginawa sa iyo, ay hindi masasayang Panginoon salamat po ng marami at sa umagang ito patuloy kaming uh, humihiling na kami ay inyong samahan kami ay inyong katagpuin lalo na sa kinakaharap ng aming bayan o Diyos maging kami ay hindi analigtas sa pandemyang ito ngunit Panginoon ang mahalaga po hindi po kayo natutulog hindi nyo po kami pababayaan, kami po ay sasamahan nyo, kami po ay sasamahan nyo, kami po ay hindi nyo kailanman iiwan, Panginoon. Salamat o Diyos, at kami po ay nagpupuri, nagpapasalamat, niluluwalhati ay yung pangalan, Panginoon. At ang dalangin po namin na lagi nyo po kaming palalahanan, na lagi po kaming manikluhod, lagi po namin hanapin ang iyong kalooban, hanapin namin ang iyong salita, namnamin namin ang bawat pahayag na gagamitin mo para sa aming paglago sa pananampalataya o Diyos. Salamat po ng marami. Ito ang aming samot dalangin sa iyo. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Good morning. 
Welcome to GCF Northeast online service. Thank you for joining us today. Nakikita niyo po ba sa aking mukha ang kasiyahan? Subalit meron din pong bahid ng kalungkutan. Masaya po ako sapagkat nakamit na po natin ang una pong uh, ginto na medalya sa Olympics sa magitan ng efforts ni Heidelin Diaz at narinig ang ating pong pambansang awit lupang hinirang doon po sa medal ceremony sa Olympics. And today is also the installation of our deacons and deaconesses. However, there will be two installations because Gideon Lim and R.V. Sapar can't make it this morning. Meron din po akong kalungkutan sapagkat this morning lang ay nalaman ko po that the resident pastor, the head pastor of GCF Cagayan de Oro passed away because of COVID. At uh, nakikipagdalamhati po ang ating pamilya sa pamilya po ni Pastor Eugene. And before we continue, let's read our passage this morning found in the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. And follow along as I read our passage. I'm reading from the NASB. Verse 1, Now at this time, as the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint developed on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, It is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Instead, brothers and sisters, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. The announcement found approval with the whole congregation, and they chose Steph Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. And they brought these men before the apostles. And after praying, they laid their hands on them. Verse 7, the word of God kept spreading. And the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. This is God's holy, inspired, and inerrant word. May the Lord add blessing upon the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, and we ask, we ask for your rich blessing, O God. Open your word to us by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Would you please teach us of the truth which is yours, for Jesus' sake. Amen and amen. While I was preparing for this message, I read a story, sabi po ng pastor, no, ng paglabas ng mga bata, sa kanilang Sunday school, tinawag niya po yung isa. Sabi niya, Iho, ano ba ang natutunan mo ngayon sa Sunday school? At uh, sabi, sabi, agad nung bata, mabilis, ay, healing of the sick pastor and casting out of deacons. Hmm? Casting out of deacons. Alam niyo po, tragically, many people in many Christian churches think it wouldn't be a bad idea to cast out deacons because of that general misunderstanding and misconception. At para po sa kanila, ito pong board of deacons ay uh, wala po sila or they lack, okay, the popular track record. Ang iba pa nga tinatawag na board of demons, no? At uh, negative ang kanila pong pagkakilala sa board of deacons. But the fact is, brothers and sisters in Christ, the office of the deacons is high and a holy one. It is one of the two chosen offices of the New Testament or in the New Testament church. And the scriptures make this clear in two places. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 1, uh, <coughs> as Paul addressed the Christians in the church in Philippi, he mentioned three groups of people, the saints and the bishops the, or the elders or the pastors and the deacons. The saints were the rank and file members of the church. And the two chosen officers 
the bishops or the elders or the pastors and the deacons. And also, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 13, again, the Apostle Paul set out qualifications for these two chosen officers. At uh, makikita po natin na doon ay binigay niya ang mga katangian ng mga elders, katangian ng mga jacono at jaconesa. And so, mga kapatid, these men and women, these people are uh, people of God. They are people of the word. They are people of the faith. They have a right relationship with God, with their family, and with their fellow men in every way. And so this morning, I want us to go back to the very beginning. Sa po ba nagsimula? Ito pong opisina ng mga jacono. And here at GCAFNE, I want us to have a clear understanding of this office of the deacon, what they are to be and what they are to do. Now, maalala niyo po ng ang Panginoong Jesus bago po siya umakyat sa langit. Kanya pong binilin sa, mga kanya, sa kanyang mga tagasunod, kanyang mga followers, na sila ay bumalik sa Jerusalem at uh, hintayin ang pagdating ng Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, at the day of Pentecost, I, uh, we read that the uh, Holy Spirit came upon these men. And uh, Peter preached, and 3,000 souls were added to the church. That day alone, mga kapatid, but during its infancy, ito pong simula ng movement, ay na uh, ranasan na po nila itong panahon ng pag-uusig. You see, the Jewish religious leaders thought that the death of the Lord Jesus Christ would disband, would dissolve this movement. At sila po ay nabigla sapagat lalong naging ma masigasig, lalo pong naging matapang, naging bold ito pong mga followers ng ating Panginoon na sila po ay nagpapatuto, sila ay nagahayag, mga kapatid, that Jesus Christ had been raised from the dead. And so, ang ginag-isip na naman po sila ng panibagong strategy. At inisip nila na usigin ang mga leaders nito pong Christian movement o nitong Christianity. At dahil sa pag-uusig na yon, ay naging martir si James o si Santiago at nakulong si Peter at si John. Brothers and sisters in Christ, subalit this persecution, this storm from without, strengthened the church. Down through the centuries, these storms from without, persecution and struggles have caused the church to grow bigger and better. Now, unfortunately, history shows us also that storms from within the church have incredible destructive power. No, at dahil nga po dyan, sa infancy, no, bata pa lang po ang Kristyanismo at that time ay nagkaroon na rin po sila ng problema within. No? At kagaya din po ng mga problema sa mga churches ngayon, nagsimula po ito sa maliit na bagay. At nagkaroon siguro ang bulong-bulungan doon sa kusina, nagkaroon ng mga chismis-chismis doon sa mess hall at uh, ito po ay biglang lumaki. No? At ganito po ang nangyari. Ito pong uh, time nila noon, kagaya ngayon sa atin, marahil after the service sila po ay nagkakainan. At nag, dito siguro nagsimula ang pot bless or potluck dinners. At pagkatapos po noon, ito ay naging regular na gawain doon sa iglesia. So, balit, napansin ng mga Hellenistic Jews. Ibig sabihin, ito po yung mga Christians outside of Palestine at sila po ay na-influensyahan ng kultura ng Grego. At uh, sila po, ang kanilang salita ay Greek. No? Napansin po nila ang kanilang mga byuda ay tila baga uh, na di-disadvantage. No? At sila po ay naargabyado. Okay? And so, uh, ito pong siguro at the time, itong mga nagsiserve ay yung mga native Hebrews. Ito naman po ay sila ay nasa loob ng Palestine at sa kanila po ang language nila ay Aramaic. Okay? And they are influenced, ang uh, influence po nila is the Jewish culture. At marahil nung nasa pila, no, ang bati po ng mga Hebreo ay shalom. At ito po yung pagbati nila, dalawang takal ang ibinibigay sa kanila. Pag dumating naman po ang Hellenistic na widow, 
ang kanyang bati, kapagat Greek speaking sila, Irene. Yan po ang kanilang pagbati, isang takal lang. At dahil dito, nagkaroon po ng mga bulong-bulungan. Nagkaroon na ngayon ng grupo-grupo at nagkaroon ng konting, uh, siguro, uh, hindi pagkakaunawaan. Pero this problem led to uh, verses 2 and 4 na nabasa na natin kanina. At uh, yun nga po, uh, allow me to read the verses. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, It is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Instead, brothers and sisters, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And so seven deacons were prayerfully chosen to straighten things out para ayusin ito pong gusot na ito at i-reconcile at ma-reunite, magkaroon ulit ng unity, ng harmony ang church. At sila po ay nagtagumpay. No? Uh, kahit na po iba-iba, diverse ang kanilang cultural background at kanilang mother languages, ay pinilit po nila na ito ay ma-isolve. At kagaya nga po noon, na-solve ang mga apostles na ngayon, hindi na sila nagbabantay sa kusina, hindi na po sila nagbabantay sa mesol, at kanila pong ginagawa ang kanilang primary job, which is to pray and to study the Word of God. And so let us take both these texts and the history of the deacon ministry and correct a few current misconceptions by noting two things that deacons are not. First, the office of the deacon is not and never has been an honorary office. The word honorary means an office held in honor only without service or pay. And while it is true that deacons are not paid, no? dito po sa ating church, ang ating mga jacono at jaconesa, hindi po sila pasahod, hindi po sila binabayaran. But they do perform so many activities. Marami po silang uh, ministry. No? Kagaya din po ng the first seven na mga deacons. You see, these deacons, they, the first seven, they became active and in so many ways helping the church to function and grow. And two of the original seven, si Philip and Stephen, were uh, or became known for their uh, powerful witness for Christ. Acts 8 records to us, uh, ito pong si Philip na kanya pong nilid yung Ethiopian eunuch to Christ and baptize him. And of course, the bold witness of Stephen led him to become the first Christian Martyr. So there has been never anything honorary about being a deacon. In fact, they do a lot of things in so many ways in the church. And one of the most important things that they do is to preserve the harmony, the unity of the church. They are the troubleshooters. They are the peacemakers in the church. Sila po yung nag stop Sila po yung nagbabantay doon sa mga, mga mag-grumble, nagko-complain, yung mga bumubulong-bulong at nagko-cause no, ng chismis. At sila po ang nag-aayos neto. Uh, for harmony is very essential to Christian growth or a church growth. And a church cannot flourish, brothers and sisters in Christ, without that sweet, sweet spirit. And when people are unloving, to each other and the rumor mills are turning in the church ay ang mga kapatid ikakaroon po ng disunity at mai-split yung church and deacons should help us to get along as a church family and deacons and deaconesses no remember this you should help us to get along as a church family and you should support each other and know the importance of church unity so you have to guard it you have to cherish it but you have to remember also that spiritual people should be committed to this harmony expressed through diversity 
Now notice, the disciples did not say, oh, it is right time. Nung nagkakagulo, hatiin na natin ang kongregasyon. O kayo, mga Hellenistic Jews, kayo ang first Hellenistic Baptist Church at Jerusalem. At kayo naman, mga Hebrews, the first uh, Hebrew Church at Jerusalem. No? Oh, hindi po nila kinonsider na hatiin yung kongregasyon. Kahit they have diverse backgrounds and culture at uh, mother tongues, they wanted to work this problem and uh, uh, ayusin po nila at uh, hindi magkaroon ng division. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there are legitimate times to separate from professing Christians or churches, but that is not the scope of this sermon. But unless there are biblical grounds for separation, no? for example, I... Uh, Kaiba po ang ating essential doctrines. Pag non-essential, di masyado na pag-uusapan. So, balit pag essential doctrines, ay yun po yung sinasabi ko that we can separate sa kanila. But if, brothers and sisters in Christ, walang biblical ground to separate, God is glorified when people from diverse cultures and backgrounds worship Him together on a common ground of salvation through Jesus Christ. Alam niyo po, there are some churches na tinatarget nila isang sector lang ng society. Tinatarget lang nila yung youth. Tinatarget lang nila yung young pro. So, ang kanilang music contemporary. Ang iba, tinatarget lang perhaps the elderly. Kaya mga hymns. But that is not scriptural. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that is not biblical. For God wants us to reach all segments of society so that those from every walk of life will gather in love and unity to worship God and sing His praises. So we, especially the leaders of this church, and deacons and deaconesses, we commit ourselves to work through our problems whenever it does not compromise essential truths. Notice with me that the apostles, when they heard the problem, no? Ano po ang kanilang response? In verse 2 again, it is not desirable for us to neglect the Word of God in order to serve tables. No? Kaya nga po tinawag natin, they are table servers or the table waiters. And they repeated this in verse 4, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And what do you think was the result? Look at verse 7. The Word of God kept spreading. And the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. And what is the requirement for peacemakers, for these troubleshooters in verse 3? Of good reputation, full of the Spirit and of wisdom. Yun po ang requirement. And so, therefore, if you are committed to be a peacemaker, and this, again, is one of the important uh, functions of deacons and deaconesses, he must build his life on the Word of God, in dependence on God through prayer. God's Word should feel his thinking and his doing. He does not act with human or worldly wisdom, but in accordance to the wisdom as revealed in the Scripture. Ito po ay mahalaga sa pagsusolve ng problema sa church and preserving the harmony, the unity of the church. The entire congregation, especially the leaders of the church, must walk in a daily practical reality with the living God in submission to His Word, in dependence of Him. In prayer. So mga kapatid, wala pong problema. No? If we conduct church meetings, business meetings, uh, according to the right parliamentary procedure, no? o ito po ay uh, doon po sa rules of order, ay, uh, wala pong problema. Subalit, kailangan ang mga nakaupo doon sa mesa, they are not self-willed. They are not acting on the basis of worldly wisdom, not grabbing for power or influence. No? Mga kapatid, we, those who are sitting there, should seek God and His will for His church through prayer 
and His Word. But deacons not only preserve the unity of the church, the uh, harmony of the church, they also act as literal pastoral assistants, working with me and the members of the council in so many ways. No? Sila po nag assist Kanyari, kailangan po ng uh, sa counseling load. They can help and they can also help us visiting members of the church, especially po yung mga may sakit. And they also administer benevolent funds to those who have financial needs. Now listen, ito po ang iba pang gagawin ng mga deacons and deaconesses. They are responsible for the outreach ministries and material and organizational needs of the church. They serve the church by taking care of church property. Kaya meron po tayong deacon on building manage property management. And they keep careful corporate records and ensuring that the church, a legal entity, fulfills government requirements. And so you see, deacons and deaconesses perform so many different kinds of ministries. And in doing so, now this is important, they will free the pastor like me to do our primary job. And what is the primary job of pastors? In Ephesians 4.13, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. This means that the pastor's primary job is to provide spiritual food for the flock that God has entrusted to him so that they will be equipped to do ministry. Now, this is not to say that other things are not important. But not everything can't be first. Something has to have priority in our life. And the pastor's priority is to feed the flock, to train, to organize, to motivate them to do ministry. Most people say, most people say, sabi lang, church namin, may isang pastor at dalawang daang membro. But the right word is, ang aming church ay may isang pastor at dalawang daang ministro. Because brothers and sisters in Christ, in, Bi in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, all Christians have been designated as ministers of reconciliation. Meron po tayong task. Lahat, bawat isa sa atin, kung tunay na tinanggap mo si Jesus bilang iyong Panginoon at tagapagligtas, iyong assignment ay dalhin ang mga loss to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is my primary responsibility to equip you for this God-given assignment. And so deacons and deaconesses, free pastors like myself, to minister, to pray, and study the Word of God so that we, me, can I, I can equip you for ministry. Alam niyo, many pastors, they get carried away uh, uh, with building the church through management and marketing principles to the neglect of the Word of God. It takes time to prepare biblical sermons. Sometimes it takes days at mga pastor nagpupuyat to study the Word of God. Kaya nga po sabi nila in verse 2, it is not desirable for us to neglect the Word of God in order to serve tables. They could not do both. No? Hindi po nila inaayawan maging waiter o maging server. Subalit, meron lang enough time na dapat silang gawin for the week. And their focus was on the prayerful study and the proclamation of the Word of God. And so, if a shepherd, hindi po niya ginagawa yung pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, kahit magaling siya magbisita, kahit magaling siya mag-counsel, kahit magaling po siyang kumanta, he already failed in his primary biblical responsibility as a shepherd. And so the office of the deacon is a high office. Hindi lang siya troubleshooter. Hindi po siya pastoral spy. No? He is like a knight in shining armor taking care of the little battles. Nakaya naman pagtagumpayan ng pastor. Subalit kapag ginawa yun ng pastor, marami na pong oras sa masasayang at tiyak madadagdagan ang kanyang, uh, mauubos ang kanyang energy uh, siya ay mapapagod. And so the office of the deacon is not honorary. Okay? It's not honorary. And also the office of the deacon is not 
an authoritative body. The deacons, the deaconesses are not chosen to lord it over us. And it is at this point, brothers and sisters in Christ, that the office is most often misunderstood. The deacon body is referred to as the board. The word board goes back to the early days of our history when the leaders of a community sat around a wooden table called a board and made leadership decisions on important issues. But when deacons or any large groups in the church become a board to run the church, they usually become a rubber stamp. Ibig sabihin ay uh, basta approve na lang ng approve na dumadaan sa kanila na hindi nila pinag-aaralan. Wala pong uh, consideration doon sa mga pinapa-approve sa kanila. Or they become a bottleneck. Doon pong tumitigil ang lahat at walang progreso sapagkat hindi nila inaaksyonan. A Baptist church is not run by a board, nor it is bullied by a dictator pastor. The church is to be run by the Lord through the entire congregation, voicing His will. Jesus is the only head here. When the church began, the apostles did not run the church, nor did the deacons. The deacons were never intended to be a ruling body. Now, if the office of the deacon is not honorary, not an authoritative thing, then what it is? What is it? A deacon is a servant. In fact, the Greek word for deacon literally means servant. Then their original function was to literally serve Tables. Again, kaya tawag natin table servers, tinatawag sila table waiters to minister to the needs of the people. And when they understand this and give themselves into this act of servanthood, magkakaroon po ng beneficyo sa entire church. Alright? Uh, there is a positive effect on the entire church. You see, deacons first and foremost are servants. They are people who put the needs of others above their own. And of course, our example is the Lord Jesus Christ. In Mark 10, 45, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Now, following Jesus, brothers and sisters in Christ, means going against our sinful instincts and the popular philosophy of this fallen world. As we see not to go, as we seek not to go up, but down, the downward way of servanthood. Remember when the Lord entered this earth, he modeled, he modeled to us a different perspective on things. In coming and dying for our sins, the Lord Jesus Christ, in essence, said, the way up is the, the way up, the way to life, the way to joy, the way to fulfillment. It's not to put self and personal needs first. The way up is down. The way to find happiness and fulfillment is to become a servant. A servant. And put the needs of others first. Hindi po ba ito yung kabaliktaran nung uh, uh, kung ano po uh, ang tingin ng lipunan sa mga bagay? Most people think that the way up is to climb up. The way to gain is to get. Alam niyo po ang salitang down, it is a word reserved for losers, for cowards. It is a word na to be avoided or ignored. It is a word that negatively colors everything that it touches. Kaya nga po ginagamit niyo, pag ginamit natin, down and out. Di ba negative? Downcast, downhearted, downscale, down. Diba? And the antonym of down is up. And up positively colors everything that it touches. No? Kaya nga ginagamit natin, upbeat, upscale, upper class. We believe in ascending to fame, money, fortune, comfort, pleasure. Yung mga yun, power. In our society, up, brothers and sisters in Christ, is the direction of greatness. From the world perspective, it up is the only way to go. Para pong compass, yung needle, palaging nakapoint sa north. Ang human, ang direction po niya, palaging nakapoint up. 
But as I said, when Jesus came down to earth, he contradicted the wisdom of this world, the ways of this world. He turned everything upside down by teaching that to be truly great, you must go down. According to, the, to Jesus' way of thinking, greatness is not measured by self-will, but self-abandonment. Not by pride, but by humility. The more you give, the more you gain. And Christians who have embraced this philosophy of greatness, Christians who have embraced this spiritual discipline of service, they have discovered something amazing, something awesome. Hindi kagaya po ng kanilang mga kasabayan sa mundong ito na pataas lagi ang tingin. No? Ano po ang kanilang nangyari? They end up drowning in frustration and emptiness. Subalit ang mga Kristiyano, ang thinking, yung pong in-embrace nila, that, that, that uh, philosophy of greatness, that spiritual discipline of service, downward, they find fulfillment and joy in life. Let me read to you again, verses, uh, let me read to you the verses before uh, Mark 10, 45. No? And these verses... Jesus calls us to follow his example and go down. He calls all his followers to practice the discipline of service. In verses 42 to 44, calling them to himself, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles domineer over them. And their people in high position exercise authority over them. But it is not the way among you. Rather, whoever wants to become prominent among you shall be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you shall be slave of all. Do you get it? The rest of the world seeks shameless self-promotion. They grab at power and glory. You know, the rest of the world looks after the number one. Not so with you, the Lord Jesus Christ said. As disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must be different. We gain status in God's eyes, not through being served, but through serving, through putting others, their needs above our own. And that's the way Jesus expects his followers to live. That is the way that Jesus expects his leaders, the leaders of the church to live. Are we prepared to do that? So this charge is not only for our deacons and deaconesses as they, be, I'm sorry, as they begin their year of service to our church. It is a charge for, all, for, for us all. It is re, a reminder that the best way to be a, the neighbor, the, the best way to be the best neighbor is to be like Jesus Christ and embrace a life of service. And so what is involved in this discipline? of service. First, we must learn to embrace the mundane. Jesus calls us to serve in doing those acts of service that won't bring glory to us. No? Ito po yung mga ginagawa natin unseen, wala sa, sa limelight, wala sa center stage. And Jesus wants us to work helping others in ways that are just plain, basic, everyday helping, the mundane. I'm talking about things that tend to be out of the limelight, brothers and sisters in Christ. So, ibig sabihin po nun that you will not get to the point kapag ito po ay doon ka sa likod, behind the scene. Di ba, hindi mo masasabi, ang galing ko, ang ganda ng ginawa ko. What a wonderful thing that I've done. No? Ma para po makontrol no? yung ego natin pag ganun. My friends, as we grow in Christ-likeness, we begin serving others in basic ways, naturally effortlessly for the simple joy of doing so. We learn that this is the way life, the abundant life of the kingdom of God works. Mundane opportunities are all around us all the time. Hindi lamang para sa mga jakuno at jakonesa. I'm talking about, no, meron po tayong mga elderly because of this pandemic and they need no, wala silang kasama sa bahay to buy, to buy their medicines. Uh, pwede po siguro tayo, di ba, mag-volunteer. And uh, tawagan sila, baka they have something. They, they need something na kailangan pabili. Then, 
di po ba, ay pwede po tayo na uh, i-offer natin, no? lalo na yung mga mesa sakyan. No? And also, texting or calling someone, uh, those who are hurting, no? or God reminds you of someone, no? uh, pag ha, uh, naisip mo siya, text him, call him, no? uh, make kamusta to him. You know, our ministry assistant, lagi rin po siyang lumalabas. No, nagji-jeep, sumasakay ng tricycle, baka meron din po kayong sasakyan. You can offer your ride and help him. Nagpapafirma siya ng cheque sa mga elders natin. Di po ba? Pwede kayo magbigay ng schedule sa kanya so he can call you and you can also help him. Sa atin pong Sunday School Department, you can help in preparing the materials needed para sa kanila or kung paano po natin sila ma uh, igagather no? sa Zoom, by, via Zoom, and you can ask Sister May Kawa. Uh, she is the head ng ating uh, Sunday School Department. So I'm talking about simple things. The kind of things that don't use, you usually get you noticed. Yung hindi ka napapansin. And that is a basic act of service. Not only that we must learn to embrace the mundane, we must also learn to embrace silence. Sabi nga po ni uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, this is the ministry of holding the tongue. There is a need for us to resist the temptation to share everything that is on our mind, especially if doing so will hurt others or will make us look important or wise. Hindi po ba? Hindi, kailangan ko masabi lahat ng laman ng uh, isip ko, lahat ng laman na nasa utak ko. But kung ito po ay makakasakit, kung ito po ay papalabasing ikaw ay magaling o ikaw ay wais, Hold your tongue. So one way that we can humbly serve others well is by holding our tongue. And it takes true humility and the power of the Spirit to hold back that comment that you really want to let loose. Again, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, Thus it must be a decisive rule of every Christian fellowship that its individual is prohibited from saying much that occurs to him. In other words, there is a place, brothers and sisters in Christ, for speaking, but we need to be slow to speak and quick to hear. At ito po ay mahirap sa atin. Para tayong mga bata, alam niyo yung mga bata, pag nakakita ng microphone, nag-aagawan niyan. No? To, they, want, they love to get the floor and the attention that goes with it. O bakit po popular ang social media? It gives everyone and anyone tons of micro uh, microphone opportunities, times to exalt themselves, times to use their words to hurt others. Uh, so I was preparing again for this message. I read about Evan Williams, who is one of the founders of Twitter and Blogger. He said that his motivation for founding these popular social media sites was to set everyone free to express their emotions and their opinions online. And you know, William now regrets his work. He says, I think the internet is broken and things are getting worse. People are using Facebook to showcase suicides, beatings, and murder in real time. Twitter is a hive for trolling and abuse that it seems unable to stop. Fake news, whether created for ideology or profit, runs rampant. I thought once everybody could speak freely and exchange information and ideas, the world around would automatically become a better place. I was wrong about that. Opo, marami pong benefits ang social media. But too often, it is that open mic that encourages us to do things that make us popular, things that get us the glory of more and more followers. Oh, ang daming followers niya, libo. libo ba? At just imagine kung ano po, kung hindi makokontain nung, uh, yung sarili niya, yung sinful nature niya, ano ang dating nun kapag uh, sinasabi, yan, marami siyang followers. And you see, when people let their sinful nature have the mic, they use their postings to hurt people. 
And so servants have to learn that. As Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 7, the last part of verse 7 says, A time to be silent and a time to speak. Spiritual people, when they do speak, they build others up, not destroy. They build others up and not themselves. They preserve unity and not destroy it. And because of that, they learn to embrace silence, holding their tongues. They follow the command of Ephesians 4.29. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. But if there is any good word for edification, according to the need of the moment, say that so that it will give grace to those who hear. At mari siguro, as you are watching right now, Pastor, di naman ako jakuno. What does it have to do with me? Why do you take so much sermon time for that subject? As I've said a few moments ago, I have felt led to do so. Mga kapatid, so that we'll have a clear understanding of what a deacon is to be. But another reason is that as a body, may we realize the importance of the deacon ministry. And that will be challenged to pray that more, more people will respond to God's call to this special office. And so in the meantime, we need to be all servant-minded so that this body our church, GCFNE, will not suffer. And so when you see a ministry need, please <laughs> do all you can to fill it. Text someone who is recuperating from an illness. Offer to bring meal to a bereaved family. Call someone who is hurting. Let them know that you will pray for them. Ask God to make you a blessing to someone else in the church and ask that every day. Encourage our leaders, encourage our deacons and deaconesses. Tell them that you will pray for them. Ask God to empower them and enable them to do the task that they have been given. And while we are on this subject, I want you to know I am so happy and so excited to have the following who will serve as deacons and deaconesses of GCFNE for the year 2021-2022. We have deacons Joseph Puliano, Gideon Lim, Arvin Sapar, and deaconesses Marites Regala, Susan Juliano, and Arlene Tolentino. I am happy because I know they are Christ-like servants. They will set the example for all of us as they embrace the mundane and also embrace the spiritual discipline of silence. And so... We now go to the installation of our deacons and deaconesses. Leadership in the local church is provided by the pastor, the elders, and the deacons and deaconesses. The pastors and the elders are the ruling or overseeing leaders. Deacons and deaconesses are the table waiters or those who lead by their service. Deacons and deaconesses assist the elders in visiting the sick, extending material help to the poor, and giving counsel to those who are in need of such. They exercise leadership through their services. Again, deacons and deaconesses are responsible for the outreach ministries and for the material and organizational needs of the church. They serve the church by taking care of church property, keeping careful corporate records, and in ensuring that the church, a legal, a legal entity, fulfills government requirements. And for you, deacons and deaconesses, who will also lead the people of God, here are God's instructions. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust this to faithful people who will be able to teach others also. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a worker who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. May I introduce to you our new set of deacons and deaconesses? And as I call your name, would you please join me on stage? 
First, Sister Marites Regala. She was formerly connected with Manila Water Company, where she held a leadership role as head at a department that oversees the supplies and material requirements for water production, pipe laying projects, and other programs that provide clean water in the eastern part of Metro Manila. She is now retired and a full-time homemaker. She came to know the Lord in 1984. She is also involved in GCF Northeast since 2009 as the facilitator in prayer meetings every Wednesday night. Second, Dr. Joseph A. Juliano. He is the deacon assigned in administration and finance. He is currently working as an anesthesiologist. He came to know the Lord in 1996. Third, Sister Susan G. Juliano. She is our deaconess for evangelism. She is also the head of our benevolence ministry. She currently works as a pharmacist. She came to know the Lord in 1995. And last, Sister Arlene Tolentino. She is our deaconess for equipping and Sunday school uh, department. Currently working as senior client manager at ArtSource Asia, design, a design firm focused on brand building. She serves at GCNE in Sunday school teaching primary level kids. She came to know the Lord in 1983. As deacons and deaconesses of this church, you are expected to be examples to God's people in the purity of your motives, conduct, values, and relationships. To follow Christ our Lord in his self-giving servant leadership, serving rather than being served. To teach God's word, whether in private or in public, convenient or inconvenient, and to bring God's sheep to the chief shepherd in intercessory prayer, praying by name for each of the flock God entrusted to your care. Do you now make these commitments in the presence of God and this congregation? If so, say we do. We do. Let us now recite the officer's pledge. Please raise your right hand and follow after me. As a deacon, deaconess of GCF Northeast, I, would you please state your name? Joseph. Fully dependent on the enabling of the Holy Spirit. Fully dependent on the enabling of the Holy Spirit. Pledge that. Pledge that. Following the example of our Lord. Following the example of our Lord. I will endeavor. I will endeavor. To so live. To so live. That my private and public life. That my private and public life will be a worthy model for my fellow believers at GCF and E. For my fellow believers at GCF and E. I will seek to be a servant. I will seek to be a servant. Humbly ministering. Humbly ministering to the needs of individual believers. To the needs of individual believers. And the whole church. And the whole church. Gently. Gently. Firmly. Firmly. And compassionately caring for the flock. And compassionately caring for the flock. Recognizing that spiritual growth occurs. Recognizing that spiritual growth occurs. Only as the believers are fed the word of God. Only as the believers, believers are fed the word of God. I will take every opportunity. I will, I will take every opportunity to help teach the word. To help teach the word in public or in private. In public or in private. Whether convenient or inconvenient. Whether convenient or inconvenient. As the Lord Himself prayed, faithfully prayed for His disciples. As the Lord Himself faithfully prayed for His disciples. I will endeavor. I will endeavor to diligently pray. To diligently pray for every member of GCF and E. For every member of GCF and E. By name and for the congregation as a whole. By name and for the congregation as a whole. May I call the members of the council to join us on stage. Let us now dedicate our deacons and deaconesses. Let us pray. Our gracious loving Father, it has pleased you to choose and put these, your servants, 
into positions of leadership as deacons and deaconesses in your church, GCF Northeast, would you please enable them to faithfully fulfill the responsibilities of their office, to be worthy examples to your people, to humbly do works of service, to be ready teachers of your word, and to intercede by name for those you have put under their care, in order that the work of your church and the establishment of your kingdom may greatly prosper and your name is honored. We, dedic we dedicate them to you, O God. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. May isang mga ngaral na inihambing ang pagbibigay sa tatlong bagay. Una, bato. Pangalawa, isponha. At ang pangatlo ay hanikong. Ang sabi niya, may nagbibigay daw na katulad ng isang bato. Na kailangan mo pang pukpukin, basagin, para makita mo ang kalooban nito. At meron namang nagbibigay na tulad ng isponha kailangan mo siyang pigain at pilipitin pa para lang lumabas ang katas nito at meron naman daw pong nagbibigay katulad ng honeycomb na kusang dumadaloy ang tamis nito tulad po ng nasabi sa pangalawang kurinto kapitulo siyam talatang pito Magbigay ang bawat isa ayon sa ipinasya ng kanyang puso. Huwag mabigat sa loob o dahil sa kailangan sapagkat iniibig ng Diyos ang nagbibigay na masaya. Tayo po ay manalangin. Aming Diyos na dakila, kami po ay dumalapit muli sa iyo at samahan mo po kami sa aming paghahandog ng aming alay ng mga uh, napagtagumpayan namin sa aming buhay. Nawa o Diyos na ang mga salapi na aming ilalagak sa iyong paanan, ito po ay magamit ayon sa iyong kaparaanan, Panginoon. At ang marami sa amin maaring hindi po uh, makakapagbigay sa mga oras nito dahil sa kanilang kalagayan. Nawa, Panginoon, katagpuin mo ang kanilang pangangailangan upang sa mga darating pang araw makita po namin na sila man po ay ginagamit nyo sa ministeryo ng pagbibigay. Nawa, Panginoon, na ang bawat isa na nagkaloob ng kanilang uh, pananalapi, uh, katagpuin nyo ang kanilang mga pangangailangan pinansyal, pisikal, maging ang uh, pangangailangan nilang kagalingan at uh, at bigyan niyo po sila ng kapayapaan sa kanilang mga puso. Ito ang aming samot dalangin sa iyo sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.
Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work in us to him, be all the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace.